beautiful people. This is Pretty Girl Love Trap content. This is my recap slash review for Winning Time Season 1, Episode 8, California Dreaming, okay? So, guys, we are almost there. Like, can't believe the season is pretty much gone at this point. But, y'all, how did you guys feel about this episode? It was pretty good. No complaints. Very solid episode. So, yeah, let's get into it, okay? So, it starts off with Bus. And he has this, like, two-minute monologue about limitations being in the mind and not in the body, okay? And I actually love this shot because it was actually a, a low-key, like, big mannequin challenge <laughs> during one of the games. Like, you know, it was a still shot where everybody is frozen but him. He's just walking through. So it was very, very dope scene. I really love that cinematography, y'all. So it's two days before the all-star game, okay? And Magic, he is one of, like, the first rookie to be considered and included in the all-star game in a very long time, all right? So kudos to you, Magic. But he a little salty because he only received 10 of the votes, so he pissed off. And I'm like, just be happy you there. But I kind of low-key understand where he's coming from, all right? And so Hayward over there, needing all the icy hots and <laughs> vapor rub and everything because your boy is bruised, battered, and beaten, okay? I'm not even sure how old he's supposed to be at this point, but, you know, back in the 70s and whatnot, they did look a lot older than, you know, what they was, but yeah, Hayward is battered, and yet Pat, he comes in the locker room, he was like, I see what's going on, like, you know, Hayward was like, no, I know my body coach. I'm good. And Pat was like, I knew my body too. And look at these scars that I have on my knees. All right. So we're going to need you. So I need you to take it easy, preserve what you have. And yeah, we'll be straight going forward. All right. So hey, I was like, okay, good looking now. All right. Pat, I'm not mad at you. Okay. And so at this point, in terms of the Lakers record, they're 40 and 16. Okay. So it's looking good. They are in first place in the West, and actually, I feel like in the league at this point because they had also the Celtics score, and I'm like, okay, I love you, you know, comparing the records and whatnot. That's what I'm talking about, all right? And so McKinney, he comes in the locker room, and they all celebrating, just messing up the whole vibe. You know, you're just chilling, whatever, and you got that one person that enters the room, and just the vibe just switches and changes. Like, that's how it was. And I wasn't really happy to see <laughs> Like, my feelings about these characters are shifting. Like, I'm really feeling this Pat and uh, Paul dynamic, even though I'm really not liking Paul either. I'm, I'm really so pro-Pat that I'm willing to just throw in Paul <laughs> with it as well. But I'm really not feeling Mr. McKinney at this point. Like, I don't know. What do y'all think? So, you know, they're having a little team bonding. So they go into Paul's and um, Pat's office because, you know, they share an office job. I'm like, ooh, that's ghetto. But anywho, <laughs> um, they kind of toast to, you know, they're winning. So they was like, you know, 31 and such and such, get you know, number 31 win. So, Jack was like, you mean 40, right? Because we won 40 games. And Pat was like, no, this is kind of like our little thing. Like, technically, this is the 31st game that they've coached together, okay? Because, you know, Paul went down. I believe it was game nine or what have you. So, yeah, it was kind of awkward. I'm like, oh, this is like a little, you know, <laughs> ex-girlfriend, ex-boyfriend situation. Like, oh, Lord, this is, this is a little young and arrested and whatnot. So, Jack was like, whose idea was it to put Hayward on the bench? Like, I need him getting minutes. I need him to start. So, of course, it was Riley's idea. Well, actually, I take that back. Because of all sensitive, salty behind Paul, he originally put Spencer on the bench because he didn't like what Spencer was saying, okay? And so, I believe Pat took the took the charge and was like, you know, it was me. Pat, you know, he's just being hella loyal, but he do need his job, okay? And so, <sighs> Riley started, you know, talking about this uh, trade. He kind of wants to trade uh, Spencer with McAdoo. And, you know, he's like, you know, Spencer, he ain't got too many good games ahead of him. So, it's best to get this, you know, all-star on our roster so we can really solidify 
our chances to win this chip, okay? And so, Jack, he's not feeling Pat Riley at all. I look, he think that he may be um, a little threatened. I don't know what y'all think. So, Paul and Jack have a conversation, okay? And he pretty much told him, hey, yo, Riley got to go, okay? We don't need him no more. I really need just you. You're the only person I can trust. You are family. I'm like, well, you're trying to play the family card. Mm -hmm. Anywho, <laughs> and uh, Paul was like, well, when should we tell him? And Jack was like, whenever you feel like you need to, but it's best to do it ASAP pronto so he can line something else up. So, you know, Paul is a nervous right? I could imagine all of the Shakespearean <laughs> quotes he had up in his brain trying to calm his nerves, okay? <sighs> Lord, it's so stressful over there. Mm, who would have thought? So we see Jeannie over there. She done picked up grandma from the hospital, okay? And grandma, she trying to be lit, okay? She got her good wig on. She was like, let's take it to the house, okay? And so, you know, Jeannie was like, you know, I'm so glad you're in the clear, blah, blah, blah. And grandma was like, mm -mm, not really. Like, mm -mm. I still got this cancer, girl. She was like, what would you mean? They released you from the hospital. She said, because I asked them to. I would not be dying up in here eating this hospital food, okay? Girl, I feel, well, some hospitals be having some good food. Like, one of the hospitals where I live, they low-key have a Chick-fil-A. I'm like, ooh. Now, is that kind of healthy, though? I mean, it's better than McDonald's, okay? But anywho, <laughs> Jeannie is kind of thrown off. She had to pull over. She was like, Nana, like, Granny, like, Grandma, like, what's going on, boo-boo? Like, but she was like, I'm just not telling Gerald, okay, which is, you know, Jerry. And she was like, we're going to go ahead and just protect him. We don't want him to worry, you know. And grandma was spitting, spitting some games. She was like, well, men's egos are pretty much fragile, and you have to really cater to them and protect them, okay? So you've been, you know, pretty much protecting your dad all of your life. So this little lie shouldn't, you know, hurt or whatever. So I was like, grandma, you ain't not say nothing but a word, girl. Preach, child. <laughs> so y'all were at the All-Star Lunch, and... Dr. J is there, y'all. You know that is Magic, a.k.a. Irving's hero, right? And Cookie is with him. And she was like, oh, is that Dr. J? He was like, yeah, girl, calm down. She was like, I will not. I will not, okay. And I'm pretty sure she had heard years and years of Magic being a little crybaby about games and talking about Dr. J. So, girl, go ahead and fan out if you need to, all right? And so she mentioned, like, hey, you know, I got this little job I applied for, but... They are opening a branch here locally in L.A. And, you know, she was kind of testing him out. And he made a little steak face. I'm like, Magic, you ain't right. You could at least fake it. You know what I'm saying? But she was like, okay, nope, take it. I will stay my little happy behind in Michigan. He was like, no, 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 I want you to take this job. I'm like, Magic, you show. You know how you roll, bro. So... Wes is there also, so it looks like he was just awarded his little Hall of Fame trophy, and he's still looking miserable. I'm like, my boy, what is going on? Can we please find him a therapist? Like, bruh, <laughs> nothing, literally nothing will make this man happy at this point. Like, you can't please him. So the team, they're watching the game at Spencer's house, and it's cute. He has a little baby there and all the coaches. I'm like, okay, this is cute. And so, Pat, as Paul was like, hey, yo, what's up? Has Jack said anything about how this position is going to work? You know, there's normally not two assistant coaches. So how does he see fit? And, of course, your boy, Paul, just horribly lying and just saying, hey, maybe he's just trying to feel it out, you know, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, you are end up waiting way too long and getting your feelings hurt, okay? So, Paul, grow up. Put on your big boy draws and tell the man, like, he is such a P-U-S-S, you know what? Oh, Paul, just get on my nerves, y'all. He gets nauseous and goes to the bathroom. And so Jack and Spencer talk, and Jack was pretty much letting him know, like, hey, like, I want you on full time. Like, come on, get off that bench, bro. You're going to start earning these funds that we paying you. And he was like, okay, interesting, because, you know, professor and you know pat was like they should kind of lay off whatever and he's like don't worry about that he was like don't worry about this rumor e either about this trade with mcadoo so spencer was like i was like oh jack you trifling you telling them and hey, you trying to start some drama what is this high school <sighs> back at grandma house 
there's a little throwing, you know, get well, you know, welcome home party that, you know, Jerry them through, you know, of course ain't nobody there but the new nurse. And so he has balloons and everything, and they getting lit, y'all. They watching the All Star game. They drinking, drinking, and you know eating the KFC. I was like, ooh, that looks good. But we know the KFC back then is way better than what they serving now. Okay, I mean I done had it a few times in the past couple of years, but <sighs> oh, KFC used to be so good. I mean I grew up in New York. So I'm not sure if the quality was good everywhere because, you know, food tastes different in different places. But KFC was down the street, and that was my go-to spot, okay? You could get anything you want for, like, $2 at that time. As long as it came with a biscuit. And I used to switch it up, too. And every side was good back then. The mac and cheese, the, the mashed potatoes with gravy. Don't let mama come home with that big bucket, honey, okay? I'm getting them wings. Nobody better touch those wings. <laughs> oh, God, I went to a whole KFC rant, y'all. Let me move along, okay? So Jeannie, she drunk, and it looked like she never had no liquor like that before. So she's hallucinating and, like, visualing her dad in this orgy situation. <laughs> she throws up because I would have threw up, too. I wanted to throw up watching her and watching him have sex with these women. Ugh, yuck. <sighs> Anywho, long story short, the East wins the All-Star game with Bird winning the first three-pointer shot in the All-Star game. And it was like, oh, it would be that honky getting that type of accolade. It was like, well, dunk should really be three-pointers. You know what I'm saying? So the team, you know, they're not feeling it because we're not feeling Bird up in here in Laker gang, okay? And so the team, you know, they're trickling out of Spencer's house. You know, they're leaving so, your boy Spencer, he confronts Peck, you know, about the whole trade situation. It's like, oh, you a sucker. You was trying to trade me. You was trying to check the teeth. Check the teeth for the auction. I was just like, oh, that was deep. That was bar, Spencer. And, of course, Peck, you know, I feel like he always has good intentions, but it was kind of, you know, low-key shady that he was really trying to, like, you know, trade your boy. So, he was kind of wrong in that aspect. So, of course... He mad. Pat was mad at Jack now because he knows Jack is the only one that would have told Spencer. I'm like, we y'all playing dirty high school cheerleader games up in here. So we see Spencer. He all stressed out, y'all. And guess what this man decides to do to relieve his stress? He is smoking the crack, y'all. Smoking the crack. Crack is so whack. They didn't really have those, uh... No, they didn't even have those uh crack is whack campaigns yet. Uh, and it may not be really. I guess it's free base, y'all. Don't don't quote my uh my drug history facts at this point. Okay, my apologies. All right. So Bird and Magic is having dinner with Stern, David Stern. Um, he's actually like you know a little lower level guy as we know and well I know you know later on in life he became the commissioner, but he's pretty much trying to like sell them on this whole PR thing about East versus West, City Boy versus Country Boy, you know, we're all trying to just make it on real soap opera-ish to get the monies coming in in the organization, all right? And you know, Bird, he's just being a jackass. So Magic comes home, and your girl Cookie is packing, okay? I'm like, Lord, what this man done did? He was like, what's going on, boo? You looking good? He was like, oh, Rhonda called. I was like, Rhonda. What's going on with Rhonda? She pretty much told Cookie that they hung out in Lansing. And yeah, she pregnant, y'all. They going half on a baby. And I'm like, I really don't want to believe this. But I, I don't understand why anybody would lie about a pregnancy. But I don't trust Rhonda. I don't trust her. And <sighs> Magic, I don't want to have to curse you out. Because you are doing too much. Her best friend. And we know you love Cookie on some level. And you violated all this other booty you be having around. You could not ignore the one booty. Those two cheeks. You could not pass up, bruh. Ugh, I'm so disgusted. So she leaves. So she's aggravated. She's like, I see this girl everywhere at church, at school. And I'm going here supposed to be watching her belly get big and having your baby. Yeah, I'd be pissed too. I probably would have cut him. I would have cut him or I would have did something to him. Yeah, that wouldn't have been good. All right. So, Dr. J, you know, he's hosting the party. 
And he's, t- you know, asking about Cookie because, you know, they kind of made acquaintances at the uh, luncheon. And Magic was like, yeah, she ate some bad shrimp, so she ain't here. And Irvin kind of pulled home, well, Dr. J pulled Irvin to the side. He was like, well, everybody had that shrimp, so we know you lying, bro. You could have just said it was so period or something, making it all obvious. But he gave him some game. He was like, yo, like, you can't be missing out on a good woman out here in these streets, okay? Like, you got to fix it, okay? So Dr. J, I'm like, okay, you're being a little mentor, what have you. So we at this diner, okay? So Jack McKinney and Paul, they're eating. But, yeah, the purpose of this scene is to show how not ready and in bad shape that your boy jack mckinney is in okay so the you know person who owns the uh diner takes a picture of them and the flash is really effing with jack and i'm like see jack you're doing too much you're doing too much and he was trying to sign the guy's picture he couldn't even remember the guy's name paul had to low-key help him it was just a whole mess all right and i'm like see but i understand your job is on the line but I don't know. What would y'all do in this situation? So, Paul, he goes to the bathroom because he can't seem to hold his, you know, you know, urination situation up in there. And meanwhile, your boy Pat Rowley is on the the TV. And, yeah, he's pretty much talking about how they've been in such a good flow that it would be kind of a detriment to having Jack back on the coaching staff. And I was like, ooh, you playing dirty? Just how, like, Spencer was playing dirty the other uh, episode. Mm. So, you know, your boy Paul had to confront Pat. He was like, what are you doing? What are you doing, bruh? And so, Rodney was like, yo, we need to stand up for ourselves. We worked hard. We was over here coaching. It's been, like, three months, 90 of the days, 90 times the 24. Do the math. We've been up in here, blood, sweat, and tears, getting this team together and for him to come back. And see, at this point, I've been kind of like going back and forth because I really see both sides. But I think since I'm pro Pat Riley, <laughs> I'm like, F Jack, whatever. <laughs> Y'all, we at grandma's house again. Y'all, it's the next morning. Everybody done overslept, got hangovers, and the nurse still there doing her, you know, her job or what have you. So Jerry, he over there talking to her, they discuss, you know, you know, that she's in school and being a good single working mother. So he, you know, showing some so-called sympathy and offered to bear her tuition if she continues doing a good job with this mom. So he puts, you know, his hand either on her knee or, you know, on her hand. Long story short, it was enough for your girl, Jeannie, to curse her daddy the F out. She was like, she is here for grandma. What you doing? You trying to F the nurse? Like, bruh, calm down. You know what? I'm going to start hitting you some truth. You know grandma dying, right? You know the cancer's still here. I was like, ooh, Jeannie. But I'm not mad because he needs to know the truth. Everybody pussyfooting around with, with him. No, we ain't doing that no more, okay? So we see Jack. He is visiting Paul at the hospital. So the, the tables are kind of reversed a little bit. And yeah, your boy Paul asked him, like, hey, do you mind if we finish the season? And I was like, that was bold. I um, wasn't mad, but at, this is a situation where I see all sides, right? And I was really low-key rooting for Paul and Pat, really Pat, but whatever. So your boy Jack, he hit him with a gut punch. He's like, you know why I picked you to be my assistant? Because I know how it is to be an assistant, right? and not be, you know, valued, and not necessarily sticking up for myself because you know you can do more, uh uh-huh, and that is painful, and I picked you because I know you wasn't able to do more, and I was just like, oh, we getting disrespectful, the gloves are off, Mm. and he was like, you want me to give up my life's work, my life's work for you, and I was just like, dang, I kind of see his point, Oh, Lord. But y'all, the doctors ain't even clear your boy um, Jack yet. And Paul is in the hospital. So Riley is coaching the next game as the interim, interim, interim coach. <laughs> ain't that ghetto, y'all. <laughs> so they're playing in Philly and Dr. J whooped magic in the Lakers behind, okay? And your boy Irvin, he was pissed and not happy in that locker room. 
And Irving, you know, he's smooth. You know what I'm saying? He got charisma and whatnot. So he, you know, dabbing everybody up in the team. And he was telling Magic, yo, good game. He was just like, mm-hmm, you too. And he was like, you know what? It ain't going to happen next time, bro. I'm getting into that behind. And so he was like, okay, young blood. And Urban was like, you know, you what about you and Cookie? You want to go out to go out on the town? I was like, ooh, you so called being so nice, Dr. J. But Magic was like, nah, bro, I'm good, good, okay. Because, you know, really Cookie ain't even there anyway. And so Wes comes in and he looks, he's like, oh, he's being such a nice guy. Hmm. I remember when Bill Russell used to do that to Wilt Chamberlain, and Wilt never really caught on. Like, Magic, you fell for the okie doke. He tried to finesse you and make you seem like, okay, we're just being going to be great friends. But when that, when it came down to that court and that ball in that net, nah, bro, it's a war. So I'm like, mm, you play a low-key psychological game with your boy Magic. And that's what I like about the 80s and the 90s in terms of ball because it wasn't so friendly, friendly as it is today. I don't mind the friendly, friendly, but I really, really love when it was hardcore, low-key hate on the court, and you felt that. Like, you felt some of these people just did not F with each other off the court or on the court. Like, that was, like, real, real competition back then, y'all. That was the good stuff, all right? So, Wes was talking to Magic, and he was like, yo, I, I always felt you was happy, but... I kind of felt like, you know, low-key, it was like at your detriment, you know what I'm saying? And, you know, Magic was like, I am a happy guy. And Wes was like, no, you don't. You're not really happy. You just, it's a mask. It's a mask, son, and you don't have to lie. You know what I'm saying? You, you got to be a real killer to win a championship. Do you have it in you? Is it in your heart and soul to win? And Magic was like, yeah, I want to win. Because Wes was like, bruh, I got this ring, right? And in my lifetime, in my career, I have scored over 25,000 points. But if I would have scored just 10 more points in five more games, I would have had five rings. I was like, ooh, if you put it like that, that is depression, okay? Well, he was like, you know what? That keeps me up at night and having the nightmare. So I'm like, well, you kind of need a therapist and to let that go. But he never going to go to therapy, y'all. Of course, it's his past. So you know what I'm saying, all right? But that pretty much sums up the West's whole dilemma about his life, okay? Shoulda, woulda, MF and coulda, all right? And this most disturbing scene, y'all, after the Jack McKinney thing. Your boy, Jerry Buss, takes the nurse home. And he low-key, you know, so-called breaks down the cry that his mother is dying. So he also pleasantly plopped his crying head and his comb over on her chest. With tears in his eyes, <laughs> this dude starts to rub on her breasts and sucking them. And they proceed to have sex. I'm like, bruh, manipulation at its finest, okay? And the nurse really seemed uncomfortable. I'm like, okay, is this going to be a me too situation? Like, what is going on here, buzz? You another one. You're doing too much. Is nobody off limits? Jeannie was right. <sighs> Lord, it's too much, okay? But yeah, I'm gonna let y'all go. Please let me know what you guys think about this episode. Please like this video, subscribe to my channel. And yeah, I'll see you guys for episode nine, Lord willing. Toodles.